Thank you, Sahara. I'm glad to be here with everybody today, and we're looking forward to talking about this uh, concept of floor aware. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk today about the ArcGIS indoors environment and how we can make uh, floor aware maps with that. So first of all, what does it mean uh, to be floor aware? So map scenes, can, uh, maps or scenes, they contain indoor GIS data representing floor plan features, uh, a single floor or um, in the map to be able to toggle back and forth. We're going to show some examples of that today. Um, also being organized in a, and you can say this word fast 10 times, but hierarchical uh, format such that the features are associated with levels. The levels are then associated with the facilities and the facilities are associated with the sites. Uh, so that's that hierarchy that's important as we talk about being floor aware. And then the ability to interact with features within your web map um, to make you know, the floor level um, tagging features that way and having that interaction is key when we talk about being floor aware. So um, also, so a floor aware map or scene, there, it must have some of these minimum requirements. And at a minimum, it must have a layer representing facilities and then a layer representing levels. And um, it, it has to have that uh, hierarchical relationship uh, that we talked about with levels uh, being associated with a given facility. That's really important as we talk about uh, being floor aware and using the indoor solution. So, um, and also it becomes floor aware when we designate uh, this in the map properties box, dialog box with an ArcGIS Pro. And I'm gonna show you that today as well. Okay, I'd like to quickly pull up an example here of uh, a map that is floor aware. I know oftentimes we talk about how to, and then at the end we show you the the uh, results. But I'd like to start off just by showing what the finished product looks like here um, today. So I want to do that here. Um, let's look at our web map example here of a facility that has floor aware built in. And you can see on the left here. I have my facility selector, so I can select the facility there, uh, or I can toggle my floors on this particular facility. So as we look here, I select level one, you can see the map and the floor plan updates, and same as level two and, and so on and so forth as I select the different levels. In addition, as I select these points of interest, as we call them, um, I could see in this case, I've got an editor set up, but what's nice when I drop new points on this web map, it recognizes the floor uh, because this web map is floor aware and it automatically populates some of my floor details and room uh, unit name, level details and, and level names. So that's important um, as we consider floor awareness on what that interaction can look like. And I would also um, like to go ahead and share my screen from my mobile device because I wanted to give you uh, kind of a look and feel of what that looks like from the mobile device here. So I'm going to start a broadcast just to show that floor awareness, particularly in this example, we're going to look at um, we're going to look at field maps. So if I pull that up here, you see in my field maps uh, example, I have my floor picker here, very similar on the right hand side. And as I toggle, just selecting which level I'm interested in, you can see that information updates. So this is pretty new. It's just come out, uh, I think about a year ago at the UC, as we announced that uh, field maps is now floor aware. So this just shows you uh, the example of what that looks like. All right. So now we'll go back to um, our presentation again here. Let me just share my screen again. And we'll get back here into the how-to uh, and how we make this happen. So um, I want to talk, uh, show you an example of the old way of doing floor plan layers. Uh, the old way is where you have in your table of contents, you have a layer for each uh, level. And then, of course, you'd toggle on and off those levels, uh, which is not very convenient. Um, not very practical when it comes to working with buildings with several different levels, and that can become a bit of a, a bit of a hassle there. So um, the newer way, and I'll kind of walk through these, I'm going to talk through uh, just a few steps here 
on what that looks like. And then we'll jump into ArcGIS Pro and we'll kind of walk through some of those. So first of all, I have to have a level uh, attribute, a field that specifies which level I'm on. Um, so in this case, with the uh, indoor solution, we're going to look at level ID is the field we're going to have to have in our data sets. Um, and I definitely recommend using the ArcGIS indoors uh, data model for having your schema set up and all the predefined floor levels and rooms and details there. So step two, we're going to talk about um, adding a range when you're in ArcGIS Pro, a range definition to those layers, which is really going to help you organize your data, visualize rooms, details. Uh, it's going to be able to keep those straight when I have a multi-story building uh, that I'm working with the floor plan information for. And then, of course, uh, we want to um, use these in Pro as we organize it, and then it helps us with that editing prior to publishing our web maps. And then step three, we want to make sure we update all of our associated attributes. So not only level ID, but also facility ID, site ID, all of these are very critical when it comes to publishing this data in order for our web maps to work properly and to be floor aware from that sense. And then step four, finally, we'll be uh, publishing the layers uh, using ArcGIS indoors um, and publishing those layers. It, it, you can publish to your ArcGIS enterprise or online account, but keep in mind these, your account or your enterprise environment has to be properly licensed for the ArcGIS indoors extension. In addition, if you're going to be making edits to these maps in ArcGIS Pro, you also have to have a indoors enabled user type. So for those of you who may be familiar with the utility network or parcel fabric, where you have to have that additional user type uh, capability in Pro, you're going to need to do the same thing um, with indoors in these situations. But this is key to being able to read this data and have it be floor aware in your web apps or in field maps. Okay, so let me jump here into ArcGIS Pro and we'll kind of take a look at uh, some of these different examples. Um, so one, I wanted to kind of explain what do we mean when we say the, the old way. So in this example, I've got my different levels as different layers. And as I turn them on and off, you can see level one, level two. And then when I turn them all on, of course they're overlapping. And that's really the big problem is um, that's really why we need floor awareness is just because of the overlap of different feature layers and polygons that way. They're all stacked on top of each other. Um, so our workflow, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to merge these three together. Um, so what I would do there is just use the uh, merge tool in my uh, geoprocessing tools. And I could merge those and I'll kind of show you what I've got for output here in this case. They're all merged together, of course, into the one uh, feature class. And what I can note here as I open up the attribute table, really want to point out um, this key field is level ID. And I have to do this. That's why I had them separated in feature classes to begin with. I had them separated by level just so I could keep them organized. You're going to want to start that way and then obviously populate this level ID for each of those. Uh, in this case, they're units or rooms. You could call them room level details. We zoom in there, you can see that. As we scroll down through our attribute table, you're going to see that this will eventually change. I'll have a level one uh, on some of these. Get down there to that. There's my level one. So again, this is the key field that's going to allow me to um, keep track and differentiate there on which level they're actually on. So again, that's the the merge process ended up with the polygons merged into one feature class, and then I've got that level ID to specify. Um, in this case, I don't have my other indoors fields uh, turned on just because this is temporary to get my data loaded. But uh, as long as I have that level ID field, I'll be good for starters here. Okay, then next I wanted to discuss uh, this concept of ranges. So again, this is really helpful when you're in ArcGIS Pro. As you can see, my current map and floor plan here, this is just a, a line, polyline layer. It's the details. It's really busy here, as you can look in here. And the problem is it's busy because I've got floors stacked on top of each other. Um, again, I'm going to use a range. So this is something that's really helpful. As I right click on the detail or on the layer, I can go to uh, properties, and then I can go to range. 
Now range, I can specify which field I want to use to uh, be able to toggle and be able to go and navigate um, throughout the uh, values that are in that field. In this case, I've got a field called level ID two. And when I do that and I go up here to range, this is where I can set it up. And then you'll see that appear on the right-hand side of my screen. I'm gonna to toggle range on, it's currently disabled. I'm gonna turn that on. And now you'll notice it looks a lot cleaner because it's toggling through my field called level ID. And as I click up, it's just gonna show me level one. As I click up again, it's gonna show me level two. So again, it's a great way to be able to track and be organized as I'm editing and updating features. So it's a really important um, setting. And I can change the settings on my range up here. I can say single value, or I can have it be a slider tool like that. Uh, but a range is very important to have and to be able to utilize when you're working with indoors layer and specifically floor wear data. Okay, so moving on here, as we look at uh, floor aware. Um, so I wanted to kind of show you more of a, a complete picture here as we kind of walk through that and what that what that looks like. So here I've got some layers specified uh, within the indoors data model. And again, we've got other video tutorials that will cover how to create a ArcGIS indoors geodatabase. You can feel free to check those out on our playlist and our YouTube channel. Uh, but in this case, these are my indoors layers. Down below, I've got my uh, working attributes, if you will. So my working layers. Um, here's an example of where we had our, our different, um, turn those on and turn these off up here. This is where we were organizing our, our rooms, our units, and we had those in separate feature classes here as we were initially building those out. But then again, we went through the merge process and then I load those eventually. What we'll see here, and I'll turn these back on. I load those into my indoors data model. And so this here is kind of what you end up with as kind of a, the finished product, if you will. Um, and let's explore some of these details in the attribute field. So first of all, uh, let's look at sites since that's the biggest of uh, the features. And typically I'm just gonna have one site. In this case, you can see it's kind of my triangle shape. Um, and I'm actually going to move this to the bottom because technically sites should be on the on the very bottom. Uh, my site ID, this is important. This case, the name, it, I'm calling it MLS. And then let's open up and look at facilities. And as I open facilities, I can see that I've got two facilities. I've got one here that we're calling school. I've got another one over here that we're calling dorms. So that's where I've got um, the two different uh, facilities specified. And that's, again, very important as we talk about floor awareness, because next I want to look at levels. As we explore our levels, I can see I have more and more each time as I get more granular. And of course, levels is more granular than facilities. And here you'll notice I've got level one for my school building. Um, I also have uh, other levels for my dorms as well. And I'm just differentiating those between I added a D for those, so I have a different level ID. Um, but these are important that I have my levels organized and this level ID, um, I don't, for this case, have it populated, but normally before I publish, I'll always populate facility ID as well. Um, but these are really important. So now I want my units to match appropriately with those level IDs. Okay, so unit ID is, is unique there, but here level ID, it's very important that that matches uh, for all of these units that are in the dorms, I want that to match the proper level ID based on where those are at. And that's what's really going to bring that floor awareness to life um, as we start to, to bring that into more um, into, a, into the web usage and, and make it more usable there. And details here, I have level ID as well. So my details are my line work. That's what shows me the, the doors and the the different uh, walls, um, those really come to life in this details layer. But again, same thing, I have to have level ID as, as a key part of that. So my, my web maps can ultimately be floor aware. Okay, so um, one of the things I wanted to talk about here was the importance of where we specify our indoors um, layers. So if we right click on map properties, 
we go to properties there, we can look at our indoors layers. And this is pretty new in ArcGIS Pro since uh, with the indoors solution. If um, in here we can specify sites, facilities, and floors. If I do this, it's going to recognize that I have uh, layers in there that will publish to the um, indoor solution. So that's where I define that under map properties is where I define uh, my indoors layers. Now, what I can also do is these are the, so these are the standard layers that are part of my indoor solution. If I have another layer, um, a polygon layer for anything or a points of interest layer, um, and let's say I wanted to have that layer also be floor aware, this is where I go to the layer properties. And under there, you'll notice I have an option for floors and it says floor field. Okay, this is where I can specify level ID as well. And if I do that, then now as I publish those, it, those will also recognize that layer as being floor aware. So that's really important. Previously, it was just, you had to publish only from the indoors uh, data model. And those were the only layers that could be floor aware. Now Esri added this feature that allows you to specify other layers that can also be floor aware. Um, so again, that's really important when it comes to being able to, to <clears throat> visualize those and look at those um, in, in ArcGIS uh, online or enterprise. And again, also in field maps. Um, if I wanted to, now I don't have this, uh, I'm not gonna walk through it, but for publishing, uh, when I get my map ready, I'm just gonna, uh, I'm gonna create a new map and only have the layers that I want. So in this case, I would probably just have these top, uh, these layers here in a new, in a new ArcGIS Pro uh, map. And then when I'm ready, I'm gonna go to share, and then I'm gonna actually share it as a web map. And then here's where uh, we specify that we want that web map uh, published and that it's going to be uh, indoors usable, so to speak. Uh, I can also publish layers um, that are floor aware, just like I showed you and I had enabled that property. And those can also then be used either in a web map uh, or as and I mentioned, field maps. So that's kind of just an overview of what that uh, looks like and, and what it takes to make our data floor aware. Um, if we come back and uh, we can look at another example here, uh, if we pull up our, our editor, we can look at the campus viewer and just another uh, example in this case, this one is uh, similar. This is using the ArcGIS indoors uh, viewer, the indoor viewer configuration. And here, of course, I've got my points of interest and I can explore those. Uh, I can kind of drill down and, and pull up individual uh, points there. And you can see it zooms into my, my campus map, specifically, again, my building uh, and my floor aware building. So I can toggle those. And you'll notice I get a little warning that uh, point of interest that I selected is not on the current floor that I'm on. So if I go back to floor two, then I can see that's where it's at. Um, and I can do different things here with exploring that particular asset, um, or I can select the room and then I can see related items to that room. And this is nice because then I can see all of my points of interest and assets that are in that room. So again, all, all things that we can do. Um, I could make these individually uh, floor aware, these layers. And in that case, in what I'm looking at now is just the viewer. But if I wanted to edit those, I could have a separate um, web application for editing, and then that could be floor aware as well if I set that up properly in ArcGIS Pro. So I think that should give you a good overview, um, kind of how that works. Hopefully you're able to pick up on some of that in ArcGIS Pro. Here's kind of another, just a finished product example, again, showing my floor awareness there uh, in my web map. So that kind of brings us to a close